The international media are openly talking about Biden's shocking state of cognitive decline, and now there were growing calls for invoking the 25th Amendment against him. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the international headlines reporting on Biden's obvious senility. We're going to take a look at Tucker Carlson's call for Biden to be removed from office via the 25th Amendment, and stick me to the very end of this video when I'll reveal that a growing consensus is forming that that it is most certainly time for Sleepy Joe to finally go. You're not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steve here with you. Great to be with you. As always, I am your daily fake news antidote. So come on in to your Patriot Professor's Den where I help you to think better so you can feel better in these crazy and turbulent times. So if you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Before we begin, let me ask you, what are you willing to do in order to affect change in our nation? Well, at Patriot Switch, over 2 million patriots all across the country are making the switch to make sure that their purchases support patriotic companies. And the neat thing here is really it involves nothing outside your ordinary routine or the items you've already purchased, but the quality is second to none and the pricing is comparable, if not better in most cases, especially for a better quality product. You can make the switch today and start voting with your dollars to support companies that promote freedom. Just learn more by visiting Patriot Switch in the description below. Okay, gang, let's dive right in here on his uh, Fox News show last night. Tucker Carlson openly advocated invoking the 25th Amendment against bumbling Biden after his disastrous performance in Europe over the weekend. The top-rated cable news host actually flipped Biden's flub that he made during his address in Warsaw that was billed to be Biden's JFK moment, his own historic Reagan moment, calling on Gorbachev to tear down this wall, that highly anticipated historical moment was, of course, trashed when Biden openly called for regime change in Russia, which is akin to calling for the assassination of a leader, in this case, a bona fide G20 nation. Just ask Muammar Gaddafi what regime change actually means. There was major pushback against that. Francis Macron came out against it. Germany Schroeder came out against it. Britain, they have all distanced themselves from that call, which we should note is just par for the course when it comes to Biden. It, it fits with Biden calling Putin a killer and a war criminal, all this ridiculously brazen and belligerent rhetoric. Even Obama's top CIA chief, Michael Morell, snapped at Biden on Face the Nation the other day, saying there was nothing less. Than, well, he, he called it an unforced error, very stupid mistake on his part. But Tucker actually turned that comment around, saying that Biden's phrase, for God's sake, this man can't remain in power is far more apropos for Biden. Take a look. So Biden just said everything that he has said for the last week is true and none of it has been corrected by people who work for him. The truth is Joe Biden has no idea. Joe Biden has no idea what his publicists say when he goes to sleep. Then midway through his answer, Biden starts walking back his own comments. He does that just minutes after saying he would never walk back his own comments. None of that occurred, Biden said. Look, it feels almost like we're being mean to the guy by quoting him. And no one wants that. No one is making fun of his age or his diminished condition, only trying to defend the country. Then moments later, Biden declared that no reasonable person would think he wants regime change in Russia. Watch this if you can stand it. Because it's ridiculous. Nobody believes we're going to take down. I was, going to, I was talking about taking down Putin. Nobody would believe that. All right, joke's over. Too much is at stake as there was ever a time, if there was in U.S. history ever a time to invoke the 25th Amendment, it is now. As Joe Biden himself put it, for God's sakes, this man cannot remain in power. Now, if you don't know, the 25th Amendment provides the protocol for the transference of power whenever a sitting president is unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office, which, of course, involves transferring that power to the sitting vice president. God help us. But more than that, it expressly, expressly states that the majority of the president's cabinet, his or her own uh, appointees, must agree to that transfer. And so Tucker here is arguing that Biden is indeed becoming a risk to our national security, given his obvious senility. And so if ever there were a time to actively invoke the 25th Amendment, 
here it is. And he is not alone in his sentiment in understanding Biden to be a national security threat. We talked about this uh, in yesterday's video, but media critic Glenn Greenwald had a great piece over the weekend on how Biden's remarks underscore the dangers of the U.S. fighting a proxy war with Russia v. Ukraine because we are standing so close to the brink, as it were, one blunder, one misspoken word, one missile going off course could literally instigate World War III. That's how serious the risk is with having someone so obviously cognitively challenged in the White House right now. Take a look at this. You may have even seen this. I mean, seriously, look at this. This is the note card that Biden was holding in his hand during the press conference after he openly called for regime change in Russia. He actually needed guidance on how to walk back on his comments and how to answer what the note card called tough Putin questions. He was giving talking points to clarify that he was expressing moral outrage, not articulating a change in U.S. policy towards Russia, which, of course, is patently absurd. Uh, am I the only one who thinks, you know, when all is said and done, am I the only one who thinks the Democrats lie really horribly now? I mean, during the Clinton years, they were actually rather sophisticated in their lying. Do you remember Bill Clinton? Uh, th there, there is no affair going on. I, I, I didn't say there was no affair. I said there is no affair. And that wasn't, you know, when I answered the question, that was true. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Just see what I can do with a verb tense. <laughs> I mean, Democrats don't even try to hide how absurd their lies are getting anymore. So Joe's failing cognitive abilities require him to take note cards with him when answering questions, basic questions from the media and a fawning media at that. There's absolutely nothing that he could say that would ever cause them any concern. How comforting, isn't it? Now, the good news is that no one is buying this. The latest NBC poll that just came out showing Biden, by the way, suffering from his worst approval numbers ever, also found that six times as many voters are blaming Biden for inflation and gas prices more than Russia. Nearly 40 percent blame Biden, only 6 percent blame Putin. So no one is buying this charade. And in fact, it appears that the vast majority of voters are siding with Tucker. In a recent poll, 66% of voters think Biden should take a cognitive test. And that even includes 43% of Democrats. Nearly 7 in 10 voters want Biden to take a cognitive test. And again, it's not just American voters, even and especially the international media sees it. The international media is openly writing about Biden's obvious cognitive degeneracy. Look at some of these headlines just from the other day. This is from the British Times. Joe Biden's gaffe fuels claims of cognitive decline. The British Express. Biden faces fresh fears over cognitive decline after Putin cannot remain in power speech. Piers Morgan is openly stating that Biden is obviously showing increasing signs of age-related cognitive decline. I mean, are you seeing a pattern here? And one pattern to note is how quiet our own American legacy media are with all of this. They won't even broach the issue, but the genie is out of the bag. And so it's no surprise that the 25th Amendment is being openly considered here, not just by pundits like Tucker. More and more officials are coming out saying that Biden needs to take a cognitive test, the same one that Trump took in ACE. But before we get into that, what do you think of this cool shirt, huh? Let's go, Brandon, right? Well, you can get your own by clicking on that link below and checking out our awesome merch store. We got our awesome line of Let's Go Brandon shirts as well as our brand new Freedom Trucker shirts, all just by clicking on the link below. Your purchases will, of course, be spreading Patriot Hope as well as supporting this channel. So make sure to click on that link below or go to store.turleytalks.com. That's store.turleytalks.com. And I can't thank you enough for your support. All right, Dr. Ronnie Jackson, former White House physician, he's perhaps been the single most prominent medical professional to call for Biden to take the very same cognitive assessment test that President Trump took and aced. Jackson, along with 13 other Republican congressmen, recently signed an open letter 
calling on Biden to prove to the American people, given, of course, what we're all seeing with our own eyes, he needs to prove to all of us that he is cognitively capable of handling his job as president. And, you know, right after the fall of Kabul back in August of last year, Senator Rick Scott of Florida openly questioned whether Biden was capable of discharging the duties of his office. And that is indeed time for Congress to discuss exercising the provisions of the 25th Amendment. It was a shockingly brazen tweet that you don't tend to hear from a sitting senator, but it underscored what many in Washington, D.C. have apparently been talking about behind the scenes, that Biden's dementia is getting worse and that cognitive decline led to the disaster in Afghanistan. And now it's leading to a disaster in Ukraine and possible military confrontation with Russia, which would mean nothing less than the breaking out of World War III. And so coming full circle here, we now have Tucker Carlson once again calling for the invoking of the 25th Amendment. Now, of course, we will see how seriously such calls are taken. There was a theory just a few months back after the Afghanistan debacle that Kamala's people were openly discussing basically a 25th Amendment coup against Biden. So again, we're going to have to see how all this Game of Thrones stuff plays out. A poll by the McLaughlin Group some time back showed that 58% of likely voters believe that Biden Uh, would be replaced, that he was not going to finish his term as president. And here's the shocker. A majority of Democrats believe that. 52% of Democrats believed Biden would be replaced before the end of his term. And the key motivator for that belief, according to McLaughlin, is that a majority of voters see Biden as increasingly feeble and mentally and physically weak. And they just don't see how he's up for the job. He simply doesn't have the mental acuity and physical stamina. So again, we'll see. But there's no question. Biden is an utter and complete disaster. And as Tucker Carlson said so well, the joke is over. Too much is at stake. If ever there were a time in U.S. history to invoke the 25th Amendment, it is now. This man cannot remain in power. Now, before you go, you'll definitely want to check out my latest video I just uploaded on how Biden's attempts at canceling Russia are all backfiring. You are not going to want to miss this. It's a masterclass in utter incompetence. So make sure to click on that link and I will see you over there. God bless.